Hi there everybody, my name is Fairy or the Hedge Witch and welcome back to my sacred space. So this is something new, I've never done this before and I'm really excited to um, like edit this video and see how it comes together. So I'm filming this in the dead of night as usual, but um, today was Lunasa or Lamas, it was August 1st, and um, I thought that I would show you guys what I do on this Sabbath. I kind of addressed this in my most recent like update, where I've been, I'm back, I don't know what I titled it, but that video. Um, but to kind of reiterate, um, I think a lot of people do videos about the Sabbaths and they list like 25 different things that you could do on that Sabbath, but they don't really like talk about actually doing them or like, I don't, there's just so many things that are listed and I don't think it's realistic for somebody to do all of those things, obviously. And I just thought that it would be a really nice lens for beginners or even more seasoned pagans and witches um, to kind of take a peek into what an actual Sabbath celebration might look like for somebody. I take a pretty relaxed approach towards the Sabbaths. Um, I tend to just do things that make me happy. My celebration for Lunasa might look extremely different from yours and that's totally fine. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to um, give a little bit of an insight into what a what my Lunasa celebration looks like, typically. I'm also interested in doing these kind of vlog style videos for future Sabbaths, um, so as long as this turns out well, you should expect one for like Mabon and Samhain as well. So yeah, let's just hop right in and I will show you guys what I did to celebrate Lunasa. So one of my favorite things to do for most holidays, if I can find the energy, is to do some fun makeup. Um, I usually try to do eyeshadow colors that like match um, some of the seasonal colors that are relevant for that um, Sabbath. I thought it would be kind of fun to show you guys how I do my makeup. Um, I know that not all of you will care about this, so if you want to skip it, I'll put a timestamp here so that you can just click ahead and click past the makeup. Um, it's just gonna be like sped up. I still thought it might be interesting for some of you. Um, I do get a lot of questions about my makeup in my day-to-day -day life. Um, I think people get intimidated. Uh, when they see how I do my eyeliner, they're like, that's really scary, it's really big, but I promise it's not difficult to do. Anyway, that's not what this channel is about, but um, that is an important part for me of my Sabbath celebrations, so I wanted to share it with you. So I decided that um, doing a voiceover for these parts would be helpful um, to just kind of talk a little bit about um, my practices that I'm doing on this holiday and then I thought while I'm doing my makeup it might be good to give a little bit of um, a mental health update because um, this day Lunasa actually was uh, a bit of a turning point for me so I kind of just wanted to touch on that. Uh, I do apologize if you guys can hear any frogs or crickets in this voiceover. I'm recording this at 3 a.m. and uh, they are certainly loud, so I'm hoping it doesn't pick up. But one of the reasons I really like to do my makeup on Sabbaths is because I don't really leave the house very often. Um, any work I'm doing is done from home pretty much, um, so I don't really have much of a reason to go out and like get ready. And doing my makeup on holidays like this really just makes me happy. Um, I really do like doing my makeup. It's kind of an art form. I'm not super good at it or anything, but um, I just really enjoy it. And um, this day, I really didn't feel like doing anything. I had to take a break to pet my cat Flan because he was being so cute. Uh, Lunasa is one of my favorite holidays, but this day I just didn't want to do anything. But for about two weeks before Lunasa this year, I had really been wanting to record an update video for you guys to get back to filming on YouTube. And every day I would get up and take a shower and I'd think, okay, today's gonna be the day that I can sit down and do my makeup and feel good and get on camera and film this. And I just never was able to actually have the energy to do that. Um, so actually doing it on Lunasa was really helpful. It made me really feel a lot better. It felt like it kind of 
um, made me want to do something with my day because I had all this makeup on, so um, I wanted to get some sort of use out of it, I guess. Um, and maybe that's, you know, kind of stupid and trivial, but for me, and with the depression that I've been going through lately, it was really, really helpful to, like, really get me motivated. During this, um, I haven't used my eyeliner in a really long time, and it was quite dried out, so after I did this makeup, um, my partner and I went to Ulta, and we got some new eyeliner. We hung out together for a bit, um, just with the cats, and that was really nice. And then, um, our big thing for the evening was we decided to make some honey wheat bread. Um, so Ruben really kind of took charge of that, so, um, I asked him if he would want to film, like, a time lapse of him making the bread, and he said yes. So, uh, this is just him putting that bread together. I can see if he still has the recipe and I can link it down below. It came out really well. We really, really liked it. I was just trying to show the camera the uh, yeast thing and it didn't go so well. I would recommend not including that part. <laughs> so Ruben doesn't film usually. Um, he doesn't have any experience with YouTube or anything and I kind of just gave him my camera and tripod and said like, here you go, figure it out. Um, and I think he also has ADHD and I think he just kind of forgot that my tripod can become short. Um, so he was a little bit frustrated with this wider filming angle with the tripod being tall, but um, later on I do come in and fix that for him. But yeah, so here he is um, putting all of the yeast ingredients together. Um, you kind of need to like feed the yeast and get it activated before you add flour when you're making bread. Um, I don't know exactly all what he has in there, but I know for sure he's got some softened butter, some yeast, and some honey, which is acting as like a, a quote-unquote food for the yeast. Um, and then when everything is all mixed together, he starts adding the whole wheat flour. Now this recipe called for an electric stand mixer, which we don't have. Um, so until the dough got too thick, he was just using the hand mixer. I wanted to bring in Almond to say hi, but he was not having it. Uh, anyway, as he adds in more flour here, um, it gets really thick really quickly, so he ends up switching to mixing it by hand. This recipe also called for all-purpose flour as well as the whole wheat, so after he had all the wheat flour added, um, we, or he, went ahead and mixed in some of the all-purpose flour. And here, like I said, I changed that filming angle for him so you guys can see a little bit better what's going on. And now we move on to the kneading stage. Um, so he's flouring our counter and tipping that dough out onto the counter and I believe he needed to knead in like another cup of flour so um, he does that and just continues the kneading process until everything is looking good and smooth. If you guys have never made bread from scratch before, when you start kneading it looks really sad and dry and like floury but as you keep working the um, dough and developing the gluten, it does start to really come together and then you're left with something like this. So after this, um, we put some cooking spray in the mixing bowl and plopped the dough in there and we let it rise, I think for maybe an hour or two. Um, when it was done, we split it apart into loaves, let that rise again, baked it, and then we were left with our bread. Um, it came out really well, like I said. It was super tasty, and I was really happy. So for me, um, the most important part of any Sabbath ritual is the actual 
um, religious aspect of it. Um, I did several things this night. I'm only choosing to show you guys some parts of my practice. Obviously, some of the spells I perform I might not want to share with the whole internet, but um, I did include some of the stuff that I wasn't too um, upset over sharing, I guess. So I'm um, just casting my circle here and doing a very brief meditation. Um, it was longer than that, I just cut it out. And um, I'm doing an offering here. First thing, I'm offering a slice of the honey wheat bread and um, <laughs> I would have really liked to offer wine, but we did not have any. So um, I offered some pink lemonade vodka. <laughs> When I do offerings, I also like to take a drink um, of whatever I'm offering after I do the offering. And then here what you guys see me making is an abundance and prosperity spell jar. I'm not going to really go through like all of the workings of it, but um, as you see me add things in here, you might see me talking. Um, I like to state what each ingredient is for, like what its purpose is when I put it into a spell jar. I just find it really helps focus the intent of your spell. And then to focus that intent even more, lately when I do spell jars, I've been writing down my intention on a little tiny paper. And then I'll roll it up really tight and seal it with wax. And um, I just use little chime candles for that. So here I'm just really carefully dripping some green wax onto that roll to seal it. And then once the wax is cooled off, I just throw it into the jar and I seal the jar up. If I'm using a cork jar, um, I might seal that with wax too, but I'm not. And then um, here I'm down on the floor doing some tarot. I did also do a um, cleansing and banishing spell this night, but that's not really something that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, it was related to um, kind of some personal stuff going on and that's just not really a spell that I want to have out um, just in case somebody has negative intentions for me. They don't need to know what kind of protection magic I have going. Anyway, um, I flipped through my tarot notebook here to see what kind of spread I wanted to do and I found a Lunasa spread from a previous year so I thought that I would give it a go. So my spread this year was pretty heavy, um, I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot for me to unpack. Um, I will go ahead and go through that spread with you guys, I'm totally fine with sharing that. So um, if you can't see the cards, I've got the High Priestess, the Hanged Man, Strength, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Fool. So um, I got a spread with five majors, which means I am going through it right now. <laughs> I'm not going to go too in depth with my interpretations for these. Um, these are extremely personal. I would really prefer if you guys didn't chime in in the comments on like what you think these cards mean because um, these cards were very clear to me uh, and what they meant to my current situation. So um, I'm not going to be sharing the full interpretation with you, but just know that I do have a lot of notes written down and this reading was extremely clear. So the first card was what to let go of, and that was the High Priestess. I think I've been having some issues with um, control lately um, and feelings of needing to have control and power over everything and kind of having an all-seeing eye, and that's something that I need to stop doing if I want to heal. The second position is what lesson is needed, and I have the Hanged Man for that. Sometimes when I do tarot readings, even if I know what the card means, um, I still like to look in the book if I feel like I'm supposed to, I guess, um, because sometimes there's a phrase that's in the definition of the card that just jumps out at me. So for this one, one of the phrases in the book was the art of letting go. And um, I think that that's something that is really important to me right now. When I was doing this tarot spread, I felt extremely trapped in the situation that I was in. And um, it pretty much came down to, I can either be upset about my situation or I can learn to accept where I'm at and find peace and just let go of the things that aren't helping my situation. The third position is what can support you in this time, and I have strength. Um, that's pretty dang clear to me. Card number four is what will you 
receive and I got the Wheel of Fortune for that. For me, the Wheel of Fortune comes up a lot. It comes up a lot too when I'm dealing with a big life change, obviously. <laughs> Um, that's kind of what it's all about. And every time I see this card, it becomes more and more clear that when I get that card in my readings, it usually means that whatever stuff is going on around me, the outcome is going to put me on the path that I'm supposed to be on. And then the fifth card is what will come back to you, and I got the fool for that. One of the things I wrote down in my notes was the feeling of a new beginning that I've been desperately searching for. Um, I am really hoping that that is a true prediction. But that's what my Lunasa Tarot spread looks like. Again, uh, please keep any thoughts about my reading to yourself. Uh, this was not nearly the full extent of my reading. I just thought I would give you a very, very, very truncated version on here of what these cards meant for me on this day. And yeah, after I was done with my tarot cards, I just took down my circle. I made sure to thank all of my spirit guides and deities again for joining me. And I used my candle snuffer to snuff my candles out. So that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I promise I do read every comment that I get. Um, so please just feel free to chat me up in the comments. And yeah, that's all I've got. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.